It's time for our top five list, and because it's the season for it, we're bringing you the top five so bad it's good horror movies. Movies that certainly won't frighten you, but they might make you just die laughing because they are that bad. And here to contribute his expertise to, <laughs> in this field of terrible movies, our producer Roger Chang. Where yes. should we start? Well, you know, terrible movies are a dime a dozen, but terrible horror movies that make you laugh, well, they're a little rarer to find. But I'm gonna start off with White Noise. Now, what was supposed to be a horror movie turned out to be a big kind of schlocky, I'm not scared, I'm not interested. The only interesting part is the uh, where uh, Michael Keaton, the hero of the movie, goes kind of ape crazy and starts buying all these TVs and starts unboxing them because he basically wants to connect with the undead, his undead wife, via the power of static huh. on TV. So basically when you get snow, you could, there, there are messages that come from the beyond. Now, it. is this any kind of homage to, to Poltergeist or is it just... I wish! Pol <laughs> okay. Please. No. Not that good. Not that cool. Not that good. Not that cool but it's, it's, it's funny enough that you'll, you'll basically look, oh, why are the ghosts look like aliens from uh, um, uh, AI? But go ahead. Oh, number two, The Big Bad Wolf. The Big Bad Wolf. Never heard of this movie. I found it via Netflix HD streaming. And you know what? I couldn't stop laughing. This movie takes the premise of a family member is a big bad werewolf and he's going to eat me. Or rather, eat me and my friends. But they actually add a lot more to it. They basically take the half-naked, uh, horny teenager in the cabin uh, routine. In potential. Slasher, and potential they, and they mix the two. So basically, you have this werewolf that goes around uh, raping women killing guys and throwing out really bad stale one-liners. And it's so funny. It's ridiculous. He's, oh, you know, the stuff he says is so lewd, I can't say it right now, but I guarantee you, if you watch it, you're gonna love it. Good for a laugh. Yes. Must be. Number three on our list, we have Freddy versus Jason. Now. Right, yes, Freddy versus Jason. You have two of the best uh, franchise badasses. You have Freddy Krueger and you have Jason Voorhees. Unfortunately, they managed to take those two characters and put them in a Dr. Phil episode. Not good. No. Not good in my book. So basically, if, uh, we, we learn the origins of, of Jason Voorhees, and it's really not that um, scary. In fact, it's kind of Dr. Philly. You mean too much Dr. Phil, not enough hack and slash? Yeah, well, the hack and slash wasn't even the good part. It's Do the, you jump at least once? It's, it's when, you, when, when the characters actually go in to the subconscious of the basic, basically the embodiment of evil, I find ridiculous. It, but it's funny. It's so funny. Trying to understand evil. Come on. <laughs> well, it could be. Could be the point. <laughs> Number four, a movie close to my heart, Cloverfield. Yes, yeah, so it was J.J. Abrams' attempt at making an American Godzilla, uh, and he basically wanted to do it with an American kind of uh, uh, twist to it. So he did it with the shaky cam, you know, the cinema verte where someone has a video camcorder running through the entire movie. The, one of the main characters of the movie actually holds the camera and you never see his face, at least until way later in the movie. So the first quarter of the movie is great. It has suspense, has action. It's basically the other three quarters of it that's absurd, ridiculous, and parts of it where you're just basically slamming the palm of your hand into your forehead saying, whatever. Oh, oh, I liked it. Two, for two reasons. One, the action sequences. Just watching at least a digital representation of Manhattan just get shredded. That and a, a pretty dark ending to the movie. And I, I, I don't know, I kind of like I it when know. it isn't all just happy flowers and puppy dogs. I'm, I don't want a happy ending, but the ending was pretty much like, yeah, serves you right, buddy. Why don't you think <laughs> before you act? Gotcha, gotcha, okay. Number five on our list, we have Gangs of the Dead. Gangs of the Dead. Oh my God, this is like a this is a blue light special if I've ever seen one. I also found cool. this through uh, Netflix HD streaming, and so basically, two gangs are are meeting in a warehouse to buy weapons from this weapons dealer. But at the same time, a comet hits the earth and turns these homeless bums into zombies. These zombies invade the warehouse where they're at, and all action and absurdity break loose. So first of all, the gangsters are anything but. Um, they're basically too eloquent, they're too articulate, and the Latino gangster actually has no tats whatsoever. That just speaks That's just ridiculous. Limited credibility for the no, gangster. No credibility whatsoever. And you know, you have lines like where bums are eating cops outside. What's happening? What the hell is that about, man? Bums out there eating cops. <laughs> I think is pretty funny. Um, the special effects are straight out of community college, but it's so bad it will have you in stitches by okay. the end. That's redeeming, I will say that. And, and because this is HD Nation, we cannot stop at just number five, of course. We have number six. I know what you did last summer. 
Yes, this is uh, Serafina's favorite. It was made in 1997 with Jennifer Love Hewitt, Freddie Prinze Jr. Uh, it's, it was kind of the, the the hallmark of what every 90s slasher flick was. It was riding on the coattails of Scream, and uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer became one of the most parodied horror movies with all the scary movies. Scary movie, one, two, three, five, eight billion. Um, it's just so ludicrous and so absurd that you, if you watch it, you would probably do more chuckling and laughing than you would screaming. Ha uh ha. -huh. So. I get the Nelson laugh. Now, if you enjoy that, you should actually catch episode 12 of HG Nation when Film Riot's Ryan Connolly was here and gave his uh, five top scary movies in HD. Good deal. So.